Welcome back, everybody, to our playthrough of Donkey Kong Country Returns. When last time we left off, we'd finished Bombs Away in the Caverns world. Now we're going on in the Caverns world with Mole Patrol. And I've complained before about how the Caverns section of Donkey Kong Country Returns is not a particularly interesting one. And I maintain that that is still true. However, these next two levels do have something interesting about them. Oh, hey, look. A bonus level right off to the left of us. That never happens. Except it happens all the time. More collecting bananas. Okay, bananas. Well, bananas in no way are able to help me segue into the fact that I hope everybody had a happy Easter. Um, I don't know who all celebrates it, for whatever particular reason, but it definitely did happen. And it was fun, I guess? I don't know. Alright, so you might remember before what this barrel represents. It's time to go f f uh, f I was about to say flying, and I was about to say sailing, and then I was about to say rocketing. We're just gonna have a grand old time. And the reason it's called Mole Patrol, and yeah, of course, remember to collect every banana you see, especially ones in lines, because they could hold secrets to them. Yeah, the reason it's called Mole Patrol is that all these moles are trying to wreck our shit. We're not gonna let them. And once it gets later into the cavern, you want to make sure that you hit all the moles' balloons. Yeah. While not, of course, getting hit by an actual pickaxe. Because similar to how it was in... I think that was in the beach area when we um, first encountered this kind of level. Any kind of hit you get is an instant KO. They show you your hearts, of course, because it's a game it has to. But getting hit once in this rocket barrel is a one-hit KO, so... We're just going to be floating for a little while. Ah, missed it again. Thankfully, that's not one that we have to hit. And there we go. Yeah, you got to hit just the balloon. It's not like there's any kind of missile you use to hit it with. Uh, I hope that didn't have a puzzle piece attached to the end of it. I don't think it did. This one does. And then you got to hit all these... Oh, not yet. Sorry. When it, once it gets to the loop, you have to hit all... I think there are four of them. Yeah, for cake. Well... Uh... I, I guess I'm kind of in the middle of it now, and I don't know if I should go back or not, like, restart it. Um... Well, I guess I'll have to, so I'll go ahead and go and get the uh, puzzle piece at the end. which is not that hard to get. It's just smacking on this thing. And I'm sorry, DK, but we have to do it. Man, I was so close, too. Well, whatever. Um, this is one we've already gotten. It gets really sticky having to hit these moles right on the balloon. Like I was saying, there's no kind of missile you launch to hit them with. You just kind of have to ram into them. Okay, there we go. And of course, get all the letters again. Why not? But there's no real, like, it's always hard to gauge exactly where you have to hit them, because you don't, of course, want to hit the uh, pickaxe. It's kind of like a right in the middle sort of thing. But now we have all of our puzzle pieces and all of our letters. Bam. So like I said, these are the more uh, interesting levels of the caverns. Caves, caverns, tomatoes, tomatoes. Yeah, I complained before about being in the gloomy caverns atmosphere, but this world, I think, is actually the shortest, with only five levels and then a boss. 
I don't know, maybe the jungle shapes did at first, or jungle hijinks, whatever it was. Always gotta open with that noise in the background. Hey look, there's totally nothing there. They faked us out and played us for fools. But you might have noticed something. Oh, we gotta jump off as soon as it falls, because otherwise you miss that puzzle piece. That's important to remember. You might have noticed that this level was called Crowded Caverns. There is a reason for that. But we'll find it out in a second. Thankfully, one of the more easy ones. Um, but the reason this is called Crowded Caverns is a little annoying, you could say. It's not one of the levels I'm going to hate the most. I thought it was initially, and I was like, oh great, I'm going to dread this segment, but... There's one similar to this later that you're really going to hate. Hmm. Look at all those bats. Sleeping peacefully, and a giant bat. Wouldn't want to wake them. I don't want to do this, but... Uh, we have to. So yeah, once you start flying, all the bats start attacking. Then they are cranky because you've woken them up. Yeah, this level is pretty straightforward. There are only a couple of things that you really have to watch out for. This guy being one of them. Yeah. The giant bat will attack us a few times different times throughout the game. Yeah, follow the trail of the banana bunches in that line. Uh, the blue bats will always attack going the direction away from where they start. So if you see a blue one that's at the bottom, <laughs> well, not quite that close to the ground, but you want to fly closer to the ground so that, you know, you don't run into it while it's at the top. Thankfully, they give us plenty of checkpoints, and by plenty, I mean two, I think. I don't know of many levels that give you, like, three checkpoints. This one you have to be careful of getting the puzzle piece. Um, you gotta sink and go up right as you go through the middle of where the bat is. And yeah, apparently there are multiple giant bats, and not just the one that we saw. Very crowded cavern indeed. And now the le the least fun part. He starts attacking. Ugh. And yeah, you have to get uh, puzzle pieces and letters in the midst of, you know, avoiding giant uh, supersonic attacks. They're like swoobats or zubats, really. Oh yeah, DK, swatting at it from a distance is really going to help. <laughs> I guess it counted us getting the puzzle piece before I died. Uh, okay. And then at one point he's going to do something far worse, and that is that. But that's his last hurrah, and then he dies. Yeah, good riddance to you. I think we got all the puzzle pieces. Pretty sure we did. Not the most difficult, but I think it's pretty fun. It, you, when I first played through that level, it gave me a lot of trouble, and I couldn't quite figure out why. It's because always trying to get the puzzle pieces and the letters, and they get so close to the bats sometimes that it's just... I don't know. Anyway... Time for the mole train! Yeah. In no way associated with the soul train. Or the soul plane. Uh, I've got a habit now of searching to immediately to the left of any level, even if it's the boss, where there are no uh, puzzle pieces anyway. Is the Tiki here a banjo? 
it would make sense because it's like, you know, we're in. Kind of sounds like one, I guess. It would make sense since we're in the mines. Very stereotypically southern kind of thing, so you hear banjos a lot. And this boss fight is unique. In that we have to avoid thrown axes. And we have to get closer to that train eventually. But yeah, like any boss, he'll throw up and he'll throw down, and you have to avoid accordingly. And you might have seen it, uh, there was a heart sort of held in captivity, waiting for us in case we need it, which we might. Yeah, there's another one. And now when you actually get onto the train, your object is to basically play whack-a-mole. Literally and metaphorically. Um, and you have to hit each one, I think, twice, and then if you'll notice, they kind of go away. And then you gotta get on the one cart that will not fall apart. And this is a process we will repeat twice after this. So, a total of three times. And then, you see that head honcho mole? Yeah, we'll get to him eventually. This fight gets difficult only in the way of making sure that you don't, like, fall off the cart. We've experienced that before in these mine levels. And great, there goes Diddy. Yeah. But yeah, when, when jumping in the air, it is possible to kind of stay in the air too long and then eventually not be able to get back onto your cart. That's happened to me a couple of times. And also, you might notice things are getting a little darker. Not like because it's getting more grim or anything, but the lights are seriously going out in order to quote-unquote raise the difficulty. Eh, eh. It does help to have Diddy, and I'm kind of sad that I lost him. Because floating helps avoid those uh, pickaxes easier. And yeah, I initially thought you'd have to like throw those bombs back at them, but you don't. They're just meant to be nuisances. Ugh. Come on, I need a heart. Oh, great. Now I can barely see him. The, uh, and again, this makes it difficult in the way of... Jeez, good thing I got that heart. In the way of not being able to see the rustling of the bananas uh, on their carts, which is a telltale sign of that they're about to come up. And I think you have however long it takes you to get rid of them on the string of carts once they happen. And yeah, this boss guy's not too terribly difficult. He just kind of does a lot of fake outs and then come up and throw a pick pickaxe. And of course I'd get hurt by him after I say, oh yeah, he's not that difficult. And there he goes. Giant mole. The the mole prospector. I don't know his actual name. Well, that was comically close. Good thing the DK had a sheer amount of weight enough to stop it from falling over the edge entirely. And beat up the banjo! No more dueling banjos or fire on the mountain. Southerners and bluegrass fans also get that joke. Anyway, that concludes the cavernous caves. Not to be redundant. Except for totally being redundant. That train is out of commission. I don't know. So next time we'll be in the forest, one of some people's favorite areas, which I understand. So look forward to that. Until next time, everybody. Thank you all for watching. See you all later.